Hey guys, welcome to episode number 204 of the Game On Girlfriend podcast. Today I get to bring on someone I consider a dear friend, Katie McKeever. She is a brilliant social media coach. That's really the best way for me to describe what she does. She's a consultant. She comes into small businesses, organizations, and also works one-on-one with human beings who own businesses like you and me, right? And has them really transform their mindset around social media and how to use it. And I've worked with her as her being my coach on this specifically, but I've also seen her work with others. And she's just got this amazing, grounded, totally heartfelt way to work with social media. And I think the way that she talks about it today is going to be super helpful for you. If you, like me, have started to hate social media, it's like, oh my gosh, everybody's negative. Everybody's snarky. I don't want to be on there anymore. And I think we can all understand that side of social media. There's no question that that exists. That's real. And Katie, in in our conversation today, really sort of talks us through how to deal with that. Like, what do we do? We're, we're business owners. We've got to be on there. How can we really be a positive resource for people? And how do we even structure that? And I was absolutely blown away. You'll hear me say she blew a couple of my neurons a couple of times because she did inside the episode. Um, but she really gives us concrete steps to actually take right now. So if you have been stuck around social media, if you're ready to throw in the towel, and I say this with so much empathy because I really do get that, This is going to be a great episode for you to listen to. If you are listening to this in the car while you're working out or walking, I love the combo. Good on you for two-timing your effort. I love that. And this may be one you want to bookmark after you listen to it to kind of go back and pull out her three, two, one strategy. You'll know it when she says it. It's amazing. And I hope you use what she says because it's really great. All right, you guys, without further ado, pop in those earphones and let's get to it. Katie, welcome to the Game One Girlfriend podcast. This is like the happiest day ever. My socks are totally rolling up and down right now. It's such an honor. I love you, Sarah. I'm so excited to be here and get into this. (laughs) Me too. We could have like a love fest up in here. This is a good time, man. I love it. I love it. Well, I would love just as we get started, you know, people are settling in, they're putting in their earphones. They're like pretending they're not listening to a podcast while they're working out, whatever they're doing. As we settle in... I would love for you to share. I think the question I really want to ask is why social media? What about this medium that, I mean, can we be honest? People have such a love hate relationship. (laughs) with. Oh, wait, that's me. Like such a love hate relationship with it, right? Like how did you land on this thing? How is this what you do? The common denominator through my entire journey has been people, but more specifically media. I've been an editor I've been, I was English undergrad and graduate major, like everything I've been in radio. I've worked in print. I've worked in magazine. I've worked in TV news. All of it scales to media and people. And all I want to do is connect Mm. with people, humans. And then when social media came along, I'm like, this is the pot of freaking gold at the end of the rainbow because this is connecting to people at scale and I have the power to hold it in my hands. I can control it myself as an individual wow. and everybody else can too. That's my passion for social media. I think you literally just left me speechless. Like I, I never thought of social media. like Because Katie, I love people too. I have a really hard time focusing on social media and the way you just framed it. I think I might've popped a couple of neurons in my brain or something like (laughs) that was amazing. Thank you. And that's what I want to do because Mm. I talk to people with the way you think about social media every day. Mm -hmm. And I don't want it to be a hang up. I want it to be a way to serve your people because that's what it is. That's what all of these tools are here for us to do ways to serve our people and social is just another way to do that and it breaks my heart and i'm i'm so fired up about this right now because i just had a call yesterday with a client and i might tear up because he was on the other end and i was giving him direction it's a coaching client and i was giving him direction for what i wanted to see for him to do the next week and he had a hang up about proactively engaging with people in person and on social and i was like okay listen listen i love you and this is with all of my love 
but you have to understand that we are here to serve and help. And if we aren't talking about what we do, if we aren't reaching out to people and telling them our gifts and our passions, we are doing people a disservice. And I know you think the same way. And it is just unfortunate and it's unfair for mm -hmm. the people that you can potentially help. It is absolutely unfair. And he had an epiphany. He was like, you know what? And he was like, I, I need to go wipe my eyes because I mean, we had a deep moment. I mean, it was deep. And that's how mm -hmm. social can be for people. And this hang mm -hmm. up of who am I to, to share this message? Who am I to be talking about these things? If not you, then who? Like yeah. the, you're the only person who can and you're the mm -hmm. only person who can step into that and own it. But he was like, you know, I is in the middle of the word pride. And I okay. is in the middle of the word selfish. And, and, and you were, if you were coming at it from a thought of I, I don't want to be seen doing this thing. I don't want to be putting myself out there because how is that going to be received? It's selfish. It's prideful. It's ego. And you are not thinking about the person on the other end who could actually be helped by you. You're talking and I'm sitting there going, where's my selfish in this? You know what it is for me? My selfish is I don't want to contribute to the noise. Mm. That I think is where I land with it. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I use social media and I love it. And I always try to be like, like our goal inside that whole team is always like, all right, how can we be a bright light? And I think that comes from me constantly being like, I don't want to contribute to the negativity. I don't want to contribute to the snark. I don't like, how can we stay above that? And how can we really lift people up? If someone bumps into one of our channels, we want it to be the moment where they go, Oh, thank you. I needed that. Like that kind of a feeling. And I've been scared. I think that's my selfish. I absolutely hear you about like, I don't want to look like that. I don't want to be seen starting small. I think is a big one for a lot of people too. They're like, two people liked it. I'm so embarrassed, right? Like that feeling. And I think those, I think we moved through. Okay. And I see it a lot too. I love that you brought it up. And I think, you know, for me, that's what I wrestle with is like, people are spending so much time on their phones. I want to make sure I'm a great reason for them to go there. Not mm -hmm. like, uh, oh, I guess it's all right. Or I guess I'm not gonna, I'm gonna ignore my family and watch this, but rather it's really awesome content. And I know you agree with that idea as well. Mm -hmm. It's mindfulness and it's mm -hmm. purposeness and it's, it's, it's value. And it's, it's truly a sense of service. Yeah. And that's how you can step into it. And that's how you can reframe it for yourself mm -hmm. is if every time you go to think of content or think of what to post or whatever, just please ask yourself, what can I help somebody with today? Because that's what I do. Every time I get on a call, every time I wake up, I am saying, what can I help somebody with? And that just puts out so much of the best energy out into the world. And it takes the weight off of you. It's not mm. about you. It's about that other person. And you don't even have to think about yourself anymore. I don't think, don't we all need a break from that though? I mean, Yes. I love that, Katie. I think that's so helpful. And I bet there's a lot of people listening who just went, oh, oh, well, yeah, I want to help people. Like, that's why I have a business, right? And so I can help people. I don't want to go on social media, right? I think yeah. you just really bridged that beautifully. That was amazing. Thank I you. I hope so. You're welcome. Yeah. I really hope so. That's what I'm here to do. I love it. I love it. And I know one of the things that you really specialize in when somebody hires you to, to really understand social media better and do a better job is you sort of have this philosophy of like moving from like lost to leader. I mm. kind of love it. Well, I love that they both start with L. So good. But like, can you talk to us a little bit about what that journey looks like for somebody? That's essentially what we just mentioned is this sense of who am I? What am I doing? Why am I doing this? And, and owning it. Like there's a time where you just have to like own it. You're like, okay, here I am. This is what I represent. And that's an internal process. Mm -hmm. And then once we do that, once we internalize it, once we step into it, once we command it, then we have to take the next step of, we got to tell other people and we got to step into it and out through it. Mm -hmm. So putting that out into the world. And once you do that, you can position yourself. And when I say out into the world, I mean, posting, yes, posting on social media, but at, at your, you know, picking up at 
their kids' school, going out to a, you know, a cocktail hour, anywhere you're out and about or online, you yeah. can talk about things. It doesn't mm. have to be this whole public display of something that you feel like is, is kind of a hang up on social media. But once you are ready to command your ownership of your expertise, let's talk about it to other people. And that is online and in person. Mm. So we got to step into that leadership role. We got to bring people along with us. We got to tell them why we are the person to go to for what it is we do, mm. what we know about it. What is our unique angle to that? Why are we the guide for that person to help them through this thing, this problem that they have? You have to tell other people and you have to own that from a leadership standpoint or people are not gonna know that they can hire you to do a thing. Like you have to tell people, it's all about communication. It's all about owning it as a leader and talking about it. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. So it's basically, I mean, I think what I'm hearing, so when someone move, removes themselves out of this lost world of like, it's all about me, I'm so, like that feeling, and they move into leader, it really is. I remember somebody saying once, if your mouth is closed, your business is closed. And I was like, mm. oh, oh my God, that's so good, right? And it's like, I never thought of extending that over to social media. But I think what you just said is that idea of like replicating yourself online, being able to have that conversation all the time, even while you're doing something else, someone might bump into a video or a post or a conversation you had earlier and be like, oh, I needed that right now. Meanwhile, you're off baking cookies somewhere else or doing something that isn't related to that, but it's living online, carrying on that conversation for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, really cool. brands are out here doing it every day. Like they have to position themselves. They have to talk about themselves. Mm -hmm. So why not you too? Like you have to step into that world and, and own it and tell other people about it. And this is, and social media is just the way to do it. And when you show your passion and you show up in your uniqueness and your gifts, then you're giving people the opportunity to come along for the ride and to really shine and people want to they are attracted to light like we're attracted to bright people and to light and and goodness so represent that and people will mm. come it's really mm. really nice oh, i love that i really like that that people are attracted to light and that's something we can like intentionally focus on right inside social media mm -hmm. like how can i be more of that light like how else can i share that because I do think one of the things that happens to people, so we're talking about being a bright light. We're talking about, all right, listen, you got to position yourself. You got to get yourself out. And then they like stare at a blinking cursor, right? It's like this, like, well, what do I say? And I know you have kind of the structure of like what your next three posts could be and how to actually get that done and why that matters. This is really exciting for me because this is like where the rubber meets the road and where you take action. So if you're listening, this is time to really take notes and to think, because I'm about to set this up for you. I'm about to set okay. up your next week's posts, like in your, re the rest of your month's calendar, content calendar done. Like, <laughs> let's walk this through this framework. It's called the three, two, one go Ooh. framework. So it's set up of three posts a week, two rounds of engagement a week, and one social media platform. And I'm about to break down each one oh, of Oh, let's go. I love that. So back to the three, three posts a week. This is next week, y'all. It's, it's a Friday when we're recording this. I don't care what day it is when you listen to it. You are setting up your next week's posts and these are your three next week's posts. And I need you to be consistent with these three posts, rinse and repeat for the next month. And I need you to be consistent with your content calendar. So here we are. Your first post, for next week, you are going to talk about something you learned. And what I love about these three posts, I'm gonna dive into them a little bit deeper. Anybody can do any of these posts. Like you have this content at the ready in your brain already. It's nothing you have to go and research and do and blah, blah, blah. This is you ready to go with content all in your brain. This is just you packaging it up and putting it on a platform. So your first one, something you learned. I need you to post about something you learned in the last week. And mm -hmm. what I know about your audience, Sarah, is that they are smart. They're go-getters. Mm -mm. They're learners. They are people who are resourceful and listening to podcasts, reading yeah. books. Like they're out there in the world 
you know, bringing in resources, learning from different people, different things. So what is a book you've re you're reading? What is a mm. podcast you're listening to? What is something that you, a quote you heard? I need you to post about something you learned in the last week and where this gets strategic, whether that's a selfie of yourself, whether that's a post of you <laughs> reading the book, whether mm. I don't care what the visual is and the copy, just make it about this. But where this gets strategic is, you are posting about something that is authored by somebody or that is uh you know representative of a brand and you are tagging that author you are tagging that brand mm -hmm. you are bringing in other audiences into your content by doing that tagging that's on linkedin that's on facebook that's on instagram it's on twitter that's on anywhere you are on social media you can tag other accounts so what that does is it just gets your content not just in front of your own audience but it gets it in front of potentially other audiences and that's where it gets really fun so if you're listening to this podcast maybe this is something you learned this week you take a screenshot tag sarah and me yes. and we yes. see that and maybe we share it it's just this reciprocal yep. nice moment of content love that can happen online and you're sharing with your audience that you're smart you're learning always learning you're always out there doing new things so people want to be associated with that so that's post one post two is post something you teach or you want others to know so this is something that comes from your you know what you represent your brand what your ownership of you know gifts are whatever it is something you teach or something you want others to know so for example what is something that you're in the last week you're like god why do people do that thing they need to do it this way or yeah why do people think like hey my my client from yesterday who i'm i'm just so hung up on that he was blocking himself from going out and engaging with other people because he was hung up on you know what that looks like or if that's self-serving or whatever mm. like i could easily post about what i'm just talking about it right here but i could easily post about how to get over that thought of i don't want to reach out to people and show up in ways i can serve them so what you yeah. teach what you want others to know make that your second post next week and that just shows that you're an expert in what you do third post something you are proud of so something you're proud of, and this is strategic because this is where you can kind of humble brag a little bit and show off a little bit of the things about your business, right? So something you're proud of, whether that's something that someone on your team, if you're in corporate world, or if you have your own, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, whatever, something on your team or somebody on your team has done something really awesome. Let's post about it. A client win. Hello, post about a client is basically saying, hey, I work with awesome people and I help, you know, an aside to that is I help them get there a little bit. So there's mm -hmm. a little bit of that too. But I, of course, always want to lead with value, always want to lead with the other person in mind, the other service in mind. So that is a way to kind of get in the thought that of, from your audience of, oh, they do things and they help people get client wins. and huh, maybe I could reach out to them and work with them too. So those are just really easy one, two, three, quick three posts that you could do next week and do those for the next month. And that mm. is your month's content calendar and it'd just be ready to go. So with that, that. The, wow, that's your three. Okay, so yeah, I'll stop there, Sarah. No, you, you know, I'm like blown away. I'm sitting here going, this is like the bad, I'm like trying to like, take notes at the same time. I'd be like, yeah, okay. Okay. Remember what she said. Remember what she said. <laughs> that was amazing. I mean, I think that's so helpful because I don't know what to do sometimes. We have a whole team and they're like, well, we could talk about that. I'm like, I don't want to talk about that. So I think what you just did, what you just offered, it's also reminding me of what it used to be like. I'm going to say, I'm going to sound all nostalgic, but like, I remember when Facebook first launched because I'm that old. But I remember when it very, very first launched, it was so fun. Mm. Do you know why it was fun? Because people were posting stuff like what you just said. Mm. People were actually like, oh my God, I'm in the I'm in the car with my kids. Guess where we're going? Like it was so fun because people were just being people. It was before it had turned into posturing or anything else. It was like actually connecting with people, which is so aligned with your mission. And I feel like everything you just said, it's sort of brought us back 
to what it was created for, mm-hmm. right? I mean, to really connect with each other and to learn from each other and to get excited. And I mean, isn't one of the best things you can do for somebody is recommend a great book or a great podcast? Oh my goodness. I love it. I love when I hear other people I'm following and what they're, it's like this little insight. It's so fascinating. I'm like, oh, I knew that was my girl because she's right. Re- yeah. Like I would tell you, or oh, let me go check that out because that sounds like a good book or whatever. Yes. And I love that you brought up this thought of kind of the more realness or humanness or engaging and connection piece, because that's the two on my three, two, one go framework two times a week. Mm -hmm. I need you to block off 15 minutes of engagement time a week. That's it. 30 minutes tops. Like, cause what this whole framework does is, is essentially for somebody who doesn't have kind of a social media plan or a social mm-hmm. media strategy. They're probably out there posting willy nilly, don't know what to post or kind of like, you know, dipping their toe in, not really sure if it's working, whatever. So this is just the best way to get started. So with that, just block off two 15 minute chunks in your week. And what I want you to do is go in now that you've been posting consistently, go in and respond to any comments you've gotten, even if it's like a thanks, thanks for, you know, listening or thanks for posting or thanks for commenting. Look for any DMs, you know, you want, you need to respond to, and then proactively look on whatever platform it is for other people to engage with that might be of interest to you. All I want you to do be doing is just to get into this rhythm of using the using social media as a two way street. It's not just you pumping out content just to pump out content. It's for you to really engage and things will happen. It's yeah. it's really cool what will happen once you start, you know, finding other people and engaging with other people because they will engage back and you're like, oh, I'm having real life conversations on this thing now. It's really with cool. Humans. With yeah. Humans. yeah. People. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I totally get that. I, I've noticed too. I mean, anytime I actually sit down and engage the way that I know you recommend, it's so smart, Katie. But I know when anytime I've done that, I think other people have experienced this too. When you actually sit down and you're like a person online for 15 minutes, what a difference. What I think it's a difference in our experience of the entire thing too. Like you said, you're like, oh my God, people are here. But I think for other people, it's just so, I want to say warm. It's like so Mm -hmm. warm and inviting and real. It takes it out of that weird structure everybody worries about of like, but what does it look like? And who am I? And what all that stuff's gone because you're just having conversation. You're so right. And it takes you out of that, those like, just the troll stuff and just the yuckiness of social that can be out there. And it really gets you into the good of it too. And yeah, and just reminds you of that. And you're like, yeah, the warmth and just the realness. And yeah, it's, it's really refreshing when you engage in that way and just take a little bit of your time to do that. And just reminds you of how powerful it is because there are humans on the other side, actual humans. Yeah. And I will say, I love, I want you to get to your one. The one is, you did three, two, one. The one is one platform. Okay. One. I need one. I need you to go and be very consistent on one for one to three solid months because people get overwhelmed. They're like, I, where yeah. should I be? What should I do? Pick one. I don't care which one. All we're doing is just mm-hmm. is building this muscle. It's just exercising this muscle of putting out stuff about what you do. And it's truly LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. I don't care. Pick one and stick with it for one to three months and you will discover your next step after that. I love that. And I love too that you're saying as you start to take action, the next action becomes more clear. Yes. And then like that paralysis starts to go away, yeah? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Just that yeah. one freaking action. And that's all I want somebody to take away from all of this is just take one action and the next one will unfold. I love that. I think, cause I think that's true. Isn't that true about most things in life? Right. But I, I never thought to apply that to social media, Katie. That's brilliant. It's really good. Thanks. So I would love to know if you are willing to share, what is like the biggest transformation you've seen in one of your clients between like someone who comes in and they're just like, oh my heavens to bets, I'm gonna throw my phone out the window. I don't know how to do this fandangled social media thing, right? To what ends up happening. Obviously, I'm being extreme. Like maybe it's someone who's sort of dabbled. Like, what is like the most exciting thing you've seen happen for one of your clients? Well, this was really recent and it's really exciting. And this is to an organization. So I, 
you know, do one-on-one with, you know, entrepreneurs or solopreneurs, but also I work with bigger brands and this is a, this is kind of a medium sized brand and I do consulting work with them and I have been coaching someone on their, you know, marketing communications team. And Mm -hmm. it has been the most fun because just this week we got back metrics and I'm all about digging in metrics and analytics and learning from data. And I think that comes down the road once you get in this rhythm of, of posting. But what happens is when the online meets the in real life, that's when it's magical. And that's what happened recently. And what it was, was it's a, it, what happened is we put together a strategy around an in-person kind of festival day at the park day that happens in this community. And so putting out social media posts and putting out this whole strategy around promoting this in-person event. And I, you know, I think your audience probably does some in-person events or even virtual events, just yeah. putting that plan in place of how do you promote it? And then how do you tell that story of why sh- should somebody come and what's the value of showing up and kind of the community element too, of bringing people together, whether virtual or in-person, like what happens when you bring people together and just that whole story of it. And so we put together this entire plan and we just got back numbers and then the event happened and the pictures were amazing and just everything just was incredible and then got back the results from the data and other resources because surveys were sent out to the people that were there in person to talk to ask how did you hear about it you know kind of follow-up surveys that you do and others in your community probably do when you're you, you you're a service provider or you create a, you know, if you work with somebody, you want to follow up and see how things went and how they learned about you and like kind of all those like data points that help you further your business and and strategy and marketing. So in that survey that was sent out after people came to this event, there was questions on there. How did you hear about it? How was it? You know, just all those good to know things. And overwhelmingly things that came back were, how did you hear about it? Social media, social media, Word of oh mouth, my social media, social media, word of mouth. And social media was overwhelmingly mm-hmm. the, the reply for how they heard about it. And then from the event, it was record breaking. This, this, oh, this is a regular event and record breaking number of people came out for wow. that final one. And it was incredible to have this thought of putting together a plan. And I think the takeaway is putting together a plan and and a thoughtful thing, Mm -hmm. setting that up, Mm -hmm. putting it in action and actually carrying it through. And then having a follow up where you can see what worked, what didn't, and see it come to life. And it's just this beautiful journey and moment of success. Mm. And it's, it's just really setting goals and seeing how they play out. And it's, it can be so fun and magical to see things kind of play in this in real world and online space. And that's absolutely something anybody can do is use these platforms to reach people and get them to take action. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that example too, because it shows the power, right? Because sometimes I feel like we can think it's just this online thing. It's that thing you got to do. You got to show up online, but to bring that into the real world like that and to have the response be, oh, I'm here in the real world right now because of what you put on social media, because of what you put out there online, that brought me to be here with you right now today. I mean, that is like stick a fork in me. I'm done. That is so cool. So fun. I love I love it. that you chose that example. <laughs> By the way, you guys should did not know I was going to ask her that question. I love that you gave that example because I, I just think, I mean, what else are we doing, right? Isn't this why we're all in business is to really be with each other and connect and support. It's just as you were saying at the beginning, that had to be so rewarding. It's everything. I'm just honored to be a part of these stories and this work. And I just want to encourage your audience to just really remind yourself of why you're doing what you're doing and to celebrate those wins when you have someone show up and want to talk to you. If you have someone show up on your webinar, if you have someone sign up to you for your email list, like celebrate that just the one little thing it can be little to you but it can be everything to make your next step and it's Mm. really really cool 
Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I mean, okay. My mind literally, I, I really, I'm like, I'm going to have a completely different day after <laughs> listening to you, Katie. Cause I'm like, well, that was amazing. But I know that you do this incredible newsletter. Can you talk about that and let people know how they can find it? Well, you know, social media is my jam. And every week I put out a newsletter, it's called social media news to use. And really I take the weight of having to keep up with all the latest in the algorithms and all the latest platform updates. I do that for you. And I send out an email that gives you the latest in social media news. And it's like my little digital baby that I send out every week. And I really just want to help people kind of get over this hump of overwhelm and just what to do. And I can't keep up and let me take that off you. And I'll send you this newsletter that I love so much. And it has some motivation in there too, because I just really want you to win and have fun and just do your thing. You know, it's wonderful. By the way, I love it. I don't know if you know why I read it like every single time you send it out. I'm like, oh, Katie wrote something. Thanks. I really love it. It's wonderful. So we'll put a link to that underneath the show notes and underneath the video here. You know, Katie, if somebody's listening and they're like, all right, not only do I need to work with her, I just want to be in her world. Where can people find you? Find me on any social media platform, Katie McKeever. I would love to meet up with you there and talk to you more. So that's where I hang out in the DMs, on the platforms. Let's chat. I love it. Katie, thank you so much for spending time with us today. And thank you for, truly, thank you for keeping social media bright and warm. I really, really appreciate the work you do. Thank you. Thank you for having me. 